welcome to this week's review. And this time around, we're going digital. Specifically, we're looking at a digital transport, something which I'm rather excited about. To be honest, this one is from a company called Silent Angel. It's called the Munich M1T, and it's priced at £699. Now, I have to say, I love transports, and I ain't talking about the wheels on the bus, which go round and round and round either. The idea from the transports I'm talking about is to lower the noise floor by creating a physical space between one noisy component and another. Now, it's an old tactic, but it still works. The result is a reduction in high frequency noise to encourage fine detail back into the soundstage. So, what do I mean? If you're not sure about transports and what they are, what do I mean? Well, for example, you take an integrated CD player. That includes the transport, the thing that actually physically holds the CD disc, and it also includes the DAC, plus a few other bits and pieces. Now, a CD transport, on the other hand, does not include the DAC bit. The DAC part is separate. The DAC is actually wrapped in its own chassis, its own box. The two are physically separate. They are two boxes, and they're only connected to each other via a single cable, often a coax cable. So just doing that, creating a bit of physical space between two boxes, actually lowers the noise floor and increases the sound quality. Now that's even before you've enhanced the actual transport bit and then enhanced the DAC design itself. So transports in general then, well, I'm a big fan. Now what I don't see too often is a digital transport. They certainly exist, but I'd like to see more of them. To me, a digital transport is more than obvious. It's, well, it's absolutely essential. Digital components are, in my own experience, the noisiest components in anyone's hi-fi system. And when I say noise, I'm talking about high-frequency noise, the sort of high-frequency noise that veils and masks fine detail. In fact, if you depend heavily on digital components in your hi-fi chain, I would look seriously at reducing high-frequency noise via grounding accessories, isolation accessories, and a whole lot more. Although, that's a different story for a different video. So, as I say, one of the cures for a typical noisy digital hi-fi system is to bring in a digital transport. To me, that's a given. All-in-one digital systems are great. They reduce the footprint. They pack in an awful lot of features for the price. They're great value. But personally, on sound quality terms, well, you're asking for trouble. Transports and separate components, from my perspective, well, that's where it's at. When I was given the chance to review one such transport, I leapt. Well, actually, no, I, I shuffled a bit, because the old knees are not what they were, you know. But look, I, I shuffled enthusiastically in its general direction. Let me This transport is not very big. In fact, it's not very big at all. It roams around 155 millimeters by 50 by 110 millimeters. And in inches, we're looking at six inches by two by four, give or take. This is a dinky yet chunky little box that weighs in at around one and a half kilograms. That's a couple of pounds in weight, I would say. The system itself runs on a four core one and a half gigahertz ARM Cortex A72. And my review sample arrived with two gigabytes of DRAM, but you can stuff it with eight gigabytes of DRAM if you fancy. Now, apparently the DRAM allows this unit to run pretty darn fast, which means that if you have the world and his mother attached to the rear of the M1T, it'll move between each source navigating around like Tinkerbell on speed. Even so, most people will be more than happy with two gigabytes. 
I never found my two gigabyte mounted transport dragged in the slightest. I was very happy with its performance. Also inside is a heat sinked cooling system, so you won't find any fans inside this one. You may find a few fans on the outside, and we'll see if I'm one a bit later on, but not on the inside. What you will also find on the outside is a switch mode power supply that hooks up to the rear of the chassis via a barrel plug. This worked fine and did the job. You can improve the power supply though by adding an external F1 unit that arrives in a chassis of the same size as the transport. This is a much more meaty affair, offering a toroidal transformer, low noise MOSFET, and a CNC'd exterior to reduce vibration. This upgraded power supply unit costs £429, and I didn't look at it for this particular review. I wanted to look at the basic model for £699. Now you'll find AES, EBU, I2S and coax digital outputs, which support up to 24-bit 384 kHz or DSD128. You'll also find USB 2 and 3 ports, which give you up to 32-bit 768 kHz support or DSD256. Now the Munich M1T is Rune ready and supports a host of internet services some of which we will look at a little bit later on. Those services are accessed via the M1T's own VIT OS Orbiter app, which I liked a lot. The app was pretty darn stable and easy to navigate, and it does the job. Before we get to that though, let's talk about how I tested the Silent Angel Munich M1T. Having told you about the techie side of things, the ins and the outs, I could have pushed a couple of tracks through this box, said it was good, bad or indifferent, and left it there. But, well, really, that kind of review doesn't really give you much context, does it? So what I thought I'd do, well, I thought I'd provide just that, context. So I decided to grab a common track, which I could test across a whole raft of platforms. In this case, I picked up New Order's Regret from the album Republic and decided to push that through the Silent Angel Munich M1T in a variety of different ways. I wanted to see how the Silent Angel handled each approach and I wanted to hear any basic personality traits from each source. This will give me a clue as to how transparent the M1T really is or isn't. Now this isn't an absolute multi-source test, I didn't test every single option you could possibly plug into this thing, but hopefully it will give you enough evidence to aid you in making a decision about buying this transport or not. More than that, I hope it will give you a few clues, at the very least, about how the M1T will work under different circumstances. Now to set up a sort of reference, I first played the New Order track via a different transport, a transport of a different stripe, you might say. In my case, the Audiolab 6000 CDT, which provides a captured digital source, a CD disc in other words. From this CD disc, I then compared a trio of Silent Angel sources against the CD disc. I used the same hi-fi system, I used the same DAC, and I even used the same coax cable. I compared the CD transport and disc with the Silent Angel playing the New Order track via Tidal Masters at 24-bit 48 kHz. I also tried Cobas at 24-bit 96K, and then I ripped an original CD at 16-bit 44.1 kHz using DB Power Amp on my MacBook to a WAV file. So not a packaged streaming format like MQA or FLAC, but an unpackaged WAV. And then I played that via the Silent Angel 
through the USB port on a USB stick. The upshot? Well, again, I wondered if I could hear significant differences in style and approach using these sources. Yes, I realize that the resolutions are completely different. Now look, and this is an important point, I do realize that little list I've just given you, the resolutions for each one vary wildly. But please, do not ever be fooled by resolution numbers. It's a common thing, it's seen as a standard, but it's not all it's cracked up to be, not really. Many marketing people use file resolution figures as if they've been handed down from on high on stone tablets. But please, don't be fooled. Remember, statistics of any sort can be manipulated by any storyteller to suit their own purposes. It's not the resolution numbers you want to pay attention to. It's how the music was processed in the first place and how it's being delivered to your ear. That's the most important thing. It ain't the resolution numbers. Nevertheless, let me say this. I have heard some 16-bit 44.1 digital systems that sound superior to competing sources pushing out, I don't know, 32-bit 192. If you take a piece of vinyl, which has a fixed resolution, let's not forget, it ain't moving, it ain't going anywhere. It is what it is. If you process that through a rather cheap and nasty 50 pound Crossley type turntable, and then you process that through a 20,000 pound audio file turntable design, the sound will be completely different. The resolution on the actual disc hasn't changed. It's not moved. It hasn't wavered at all. How that resolution, how that music is being delivered and processed, that's the important thing. So bear that in mind. So one vinyl disc is offering a single resolution. We've got two delivery systems. We've got two completely different sonic results. Digital is exactly the same. It's not the resolution that matters. It's the delivery system. So I wanted to see how each of these digital sources, these delivery systems, performed based on the best digital source on offer from each delivery system. That is, the streams I heard from Tidal and Cobos were the best I could access, while the USB-based rip, that was under my control. The others were not, of course, and my rip was done with a little bit of care and attention using my best choice software. So again, the USB was also doing its very best. I even tested multiple USB sticks to see if I could find the best carrier. And just as a by the by, they all sounded the same. So let's see what happened, shall we? Let's check out these sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Silence Angel Munich M1T Digital Transport. And before we get into the thick of it, what about the M1T itself? What am I looking for from this little box? Well, I'm looking for it to... I'm looking for it to get out of the way. I want to hear tonal variation and levels of detail from each and every source. I want to hear the source. I don't want to hear the box. I don't want to hear the M1T at all, actually. I want a sense of transparency in terms of insight. I want information and lots of it, but I don't want the M1T to impose itself. So I began with Tidal and Tidal Masters and the New Order track at 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. The result? Nice! Very nice indeed. The detail I heard on the CD was all there via Tidal. The bass, although possibly not reaching as far down as the CD, or offering quite as much mass, did provide a solid foundation to the track. 
its meaty presence did allow the track to achieve a sense of balance in tonal terms. Up top, well, there was plenty of detail on offer here from the original recording. Now, if you have a decent hi-fi system, you will note the gamut of secondary percussion from this track. So that means there's a tambourine on there. Plus, there is a series of sweeping bell strikes. Very, very delicate stuff, adding lots of filigree tinkling effects across the treble area. Tidal did present this frequency extension, which was great to hear. The upper mids and treble were a little on the thin side, I have to say, with a certain amount of pinching present. That created a slight edge. Now, those who love a solid state sound, they will love Tidal Master presentation. The effect managed to accentuate certain frequencies. So, the lead guitar was pushed further forward in the mix, for example. Now, I say this because the sound I heard was all tidal. I didn't hear the silent angel during this test. A good thing. So, I turned to Kobo's at 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, and I noticed a noticeable jump in quality from the earlier tidal master stream. There was much more confidence in and around the bass area and also the lower mids. In fact, the output from the Kobo stream sounded like there was a little bit more space around the lower frequency part of the mix, a slightly more relaxed presentation where the band were taking their time and sounded a little bit more at ease in their work. Upper mids and treble offered just as much information and detail as the Tidal Masters. Saying all of that though, Cobas still retained the rather pronounced upper mid and treble emphasis that was slightly edgy around crescendos and busy parts of the mix. The Silent Angel was, once more, a wonderful bystander to all of this. Cobas did its thing. The Silent Angel was just an assistant for its final performance. Again, a good thing. What about solid state memory? What about a USB stick thrust into the rear of the M1T? Now, again, to repeat, the fact that I'm harping on about the internet services and I'm not harping on about the Silent Angel transport, well, it says it all really. I felt that the transport was doing a job here in a wholly professional manner, but it didn't really warrant much comment. That is, I never really felt that I was hearing the transport. At all times, the Silent Angel never really imposed itself upon the music, but they had the capacity to allow the services to translate their own personality to the ear. To that end, I wanted to see how the Silent Angel coped with my USB rip, a solid state memory transfer utilizing no internet processing or compromised streaming transmission. And the sonic results of that, well, they were far superior to either of the internet services on offer here. I much preferred the USB stick. Now, of course, I'm limiting myself to pure sonic elements. I'm ignoring the myriad of other lifestyle benefits that internet services provide to the user. The edgy upper mids and pinching treble had now gone. There was much more air and space in and around the soundstage and a greater sense of neutrality and balance overall. Okay, you might say that the USB stick didn't quite have the mid-range insight provided by the CD, the richness found on the audio lab wasn't quite there on the USB stick. It was darn close, I have to say. Now, there was one USB benefit which I missed out, and basically I felt that the USB stick offered a very precise bass response, which offered, if anything, slightly more impact than the CD. Bass was sprightly, it was on the nail. There was a real bam effect about the bass. Bass offered a real hit and run performance. Now, the CD version could be described as more organic and slightly softer in approach, but the USB offering did have more slam. Again though, let's remind ourselves what's going on here. 
the M1T is but a support mechanism for a host of source options. I was conscious that I was listening to the USB stick. I never felt that the M1T got in the way. I didn't feel I was listening to the transport. So how do I conclude all of that information when considering the Silent Angel Munich M1T transport? Another reason I brought in the Audiolab 6000 CDT CD transport was because of this. Testing and judging a CD transport is quite, quite different from testing and judging a multi source digital transport like the M1T. As I've already highlighted, a CD transport, well, it's a one trick pony. It's asked to do one thing. And one thing only, it's asked to play a silver disc. A digital transport like the M1T has an almost impossible task of trying to do many, many things all at once without bother and without any commotion. Yes, there are inherent similarities in the entire transport ethos. And one of those is stripping unnecessary features down to the bare essentials. But that's why I like transports as a breed and they keep that noise floor way down. The Silent Angel is different though. I can easily imagine that some reviewers would label the Silent Angel as a sort of Swiss army knife of a transport because of all those sockets stuffed in the rear of the chassis. But I don't see that at all. The M1T is more of a transport shell. It supports a host of different hardware standards within a single chassis. Some of them are vastly different from each other. That is, through this one transport, the M1T will be able to offer internet-based music of different stripes, and also physical memory of different stripes. With each source, the M1T has to almost step back, keep its mouth shut, and wait until it is summoned. So I wouldn't call this box a Swiss army knife of a transport. It's more of a, it's more of a butler, a sort of Jeeves character. It stands there on call. It waits to be summoned, then to serve, to offer answers to your digital life. It smooths out the problems. It erases issues. It removes the stress. It gives you choices. It provides options. It's a facilitator. And on that basis, I can easily see the Silent Angel as being an essential core to a successful digital hi-fi system, simple or complex. And that's it, folks. That is the review done and dusted. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video and if I could ask you to click somewhere below and click on the like and also if you haven't already done so the subscribe buttons that would be much appreciated and helps this channel to wander the streets of the YouTube algorithm. If you want to navigate across this video look below in the description there's a whole host of chapter headings which you can click upon and skittle here and there. There's also links to my social media pages my website, which has a host of editorial you won't find on this channel, my Patreon page, if you can support me on Patreon, well, that keeps this channel going, so any support is valued and appreciated, and there's some exclusive material over there too for your delectation. And I will be back on Tuesday for Tuneful Tuesdays, and we have another music magazine. There's some vinyl news, there's some vinyl reviews, and I'm looking at a book as well. So there's a host of variety on Tuneful Tuesday. Hope to see you there. In fact, I hope to have your company because I'd miss you otherwise. So until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.